So one of the exercises I love to do, and all of my students do it, we actually pull random. Either I'll give a, a picture or I'll give them a sentence or I might give them a thought or a word. So I've actually picked already, I have an apple that has lots of little topics and I've picked the word pumpkin since it's kind of we're entering fall season. So okay. we're gonna work with the word pumpkin today. And all I want you to do first is to tell me three things about a pumpkin. Any three things at all. Okay, a pumpkin, I associate pumpkin with Halloween. I think of orange when I think of pumpkins and they're pretty big. They're they're in my in my estimation they're they're bigger than a soccer ball. They're kind of like a large at least the pumpkins that I usually see are 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 decent size. Those that's fantastic. Things. So that's that's check mark number one for the first exercise. Um, I just wanted any three things, and I will take any three things about pumpkins. So that was wonderful. Uh, now, if we go into say it's like day two, um, our next iteration of this exercise with those three things about pumpkins, um, you actually already started giving me some details about you know you said pumpkins were large, and you said that pumpkins you know you imagine to be bigger than a soccer ball. Um, what are can you give me some examples of? A comparison for the color orange of pumpkins or a comparison of the color orange well it's interesting because our 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 kpa colors are purple and gold if you look at the screen right now there is some purple and that color that's there is not exactly orange but i've seen pumpkins that are sort of that color and so that might be a comparison of something that i can think of uh, I can't right now think of many other things that are orange, but I'm sure there are others. That's great. I just asked for one, so that was perfect. Okay. Um, now, so let's go back to that first detail. You mentioned that pumpkins bring about the thought of Halloween. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you tell me, give me an example of something from Halloween that is specifically associated with pumpkins or something that details that associates? How does that draw that association for me? Well, I guess I think of, a reason I think of pumpkins is because so often we people use them and carve them out and make jack-o-lanterns and different faces sometimes friendly and sometimes scary but but that's what i think about is that use of them for sure exactly yeah and so if we think about these three things um now i want to back up a little bit so if we look at we have halloween pumpkins are associated with halloween as a holiday for decor we have pumpkins being um, orange and various colors of shades of orange and the, the third example you had was the size of the pumpkin. So if we were to give this one overarching topic, what would that be? Like, can you think of something that would fit all three of these things? And you don't have to go specific, you can go general. I'm not sure what you mean. You mean like- um, um, Information about pumpkins, how about that? Would it fit under that title? Yeah, oh, I see, that's 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 the summary I see. Information about pumpkins, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, or- um, use of pumpkins in for Halloween or um, um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So use of pumpkins for Halloween that's great because it's even more specific than just information about pumpkins. But both would work really well. So if we take so, can you've made a speech right there? How so? You've made a speech about the use of pumpkins, specifically possibly in decor. So you could talk about how. The color of pumpkins, there's different colors of pumpkins being used. It's often used in Halloween uh, for decor. We can carve them or with the various shades of orange. And then we've also, you know, if we have different sizes of pumpkins, that's something to consider in the decor of using pumpkins for Halloween and for decoration. So if we take that, now you've made a whole speech, we're going to make another one. Okay. Um, so if I take... If I think of speeches, I classify the speeches under three different categories. So okay. there are speeches to inform, speeches to persuade, and speeches to entertain. So to inform is kind of what we've just done. We've given some facts, we've given some information, some examples, or some details. To persuade means that you're gonna try and convince me of something, okay? Okay. And then to entertain, that's like your speeches at uh, ceremonies or weddings or as, an, as a host, okay. for example. Okay, so we've just done a speech to inform. Do you want to do another speech to inform or would you like to do a speech to persuade? Um, let's do another one to inform. I feel like I'm more prepared for that. <laughs> okay, so would you like an adjacent topic or would you like a brand new topic to start again? You, you, you suggest the one that you think would best illustrate your point. Okay, um, well, we've done decor for pumpkins. 
So why don't we talk about the fall season and what are three other things you can tell me about the fall season? Oh, well, uh, the fall season is, is, as, is when the weather starts to change. It's when non-evergreen trees, I, I live in Washington State, so we have plenty of evergreen trees, but we have plenty of other types of trees where the color of the leaves begins to change. And I live in a very rural area. And so when I drive through the area, I often see lots and lots of pumpkin patches or pumpkin gardens, big rows of pumpkins. And you know, oh gosh, it's coming up on, on Halloween time or Thanksgiving time. And, and those are the things that I think about. Very cool. So that's, that's perfect. So if we take that as, you know, this is what, what would the overarching piece be for that? Um, things that I notice about fall or, uh, what I see in our area when falls arrives. Perfect. Okay. So that's, that's perfect for our topic there. So now if we go back and look at some of ex some examples, um, can you tell me, you gave me a great example with, you know, you're driving down the road and you see all these pumpkin patches um, and the weather is changing and the leaves are falling. Is there a story you can tell me that would so that you can associate with any of these elements or um, about fall, about the changing of the leaves or the colors or the, the temperature? Um, I can, I, 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 I think it was, I can think of a story about pumpkins, um, you know, in particular, um, every year, um, because of, uh, my, I've recently become in the last couple of years, become much more active on Instagram. I always find myself around Halloween looking for opportunities to get pictures of my animals with something that represents Halloween. And often it includes pumpkins. In fact, for the first time this year, we are growing our own pumpkin patch. We have our own pumpkins that are just now starting. We have the first one that just turned orange. A bunch of them are green right now, but they're they're just coming coming into, into season. And I think it'll be another month maybe before we'll start to really see uh, the big orange pumpkins come out. But we're growing them ourselves because I like using them. I like, in fact, another funny story is last year for... Uh, for Halloween, I uh, I was I always talk to people about training your dogs and getting them comfortable with changing surroundings. And I happened to have a huge pumpkin uh, that was carved as a jack o' lantern, and it was so big that I was able to put it on my head. And I used it to train my dogs as a an example of how I changed the environment for the dogs by working them with this big pumpkin head on. Excellent. So it's great that you gave me two stories because now I'm going to slot them into um, an official speech format. So if okay. we think of the format of a speech, we have um, we have an introduction, we have a call to either the topic, the main topic, and then we have the details in the middle, and then we have an, a conclusion. Okay. So everyone likes to try and start at the beginning. They try to like to jump into the introduction. And unfortunately, that's probably one of the most difficult things to jump into is the introduction or the conclusion. So I always start people with the middle, the meat of what's okay. going on. So that's where the, those three things come from. So your temperature change, the, the leaves falling, that's all the stuff that's going to be in the middle of our little speech here. So now that you give me two stories, I actually am going to take the first story you gave me and put it at the top. So that's your introduction. That's the way you're going to pull your audience into your speech. You're going to give something that's relatable, that relates you to this topic, as well as something that is more interesting as far as gets their attention, right? At the end of your introduction, you might add, you know, your your topic of these are some things I noticed about fall. You go into your things you notice about fall. And at the very end, if you're gonna have a call to action or you're gonna have some kind of conclusion, I like to end with a story because it makes it a little more relatable as well. And then it's perfect because your story about using a pumpkin head as, you know, part of training would would open very well into making people remember that you're associated with training and that that might lead on to something else too. So this might even be like a great little mini speech before a bigger presentation about generalization or about um, different ways to train. And so there you go. You've made, you've made two speeches to inform 
Um, and you could actually easily, easily tweak, I think, the, the second one there into a speech to persuade.